This short video is designed to give you an overview of the software interface for Aspire and also show you how you can get help. Firstly, let's look at where some of the icons and some of the menus are situated. As with any standard Windows product, Aspire has a selection of drop down menus at the top here. We just need to click on one of these items in order to see the sub menu, and then within there, you'll see that sometimes there is a side arrow, which means there's a further sub menu that we can choose from with the mouse. Also, you'll notice in here that there are some options that have a shortcut key denoted next to them, which means that you can click that on the keyboard in order to enact the same operation. As well as the drop down menu, we have a set of icons that you can see here that are in the drawing tab. There are two tabs in Aspire. On the left, we have the drawing tab, and this is currently pinned out. On the right, we have the toolpath tab. If I want to see this tab, I can click on the tab here and that will pop out. As soon as I click that again, it will pop back in. If I want to pin that out, I can pop it out and then just click on the small pin icon there to pin that in place. And now I have both the drawing and the toolpath tab pinned. I can unpin either of those by clicking on the same little icon and we can do the same to pin that back out again. A shortcut key to toggle between the drawing and the toolpath tab are F11 and F12. F11, which is on the left of those two keys, will toggle to just the drawing tab, and F12 on the right will toggle to the toolpath tab. We'll just hit F11 to come back to the drawing tab, and we'll take a second to look at some of the icons on that particular tab. ...icons apply to different operations that you're going to do within the software and these will be covered in more detail in some of the other overview videos and in the tutorials where we take you through more realistic examples. Generally speaking though, the file operations such as loading and saving different types of files, cut, copy and paste are at the top here. All the 2D operations fill the middle part of the drawing tab down to where it says modeling tools. The modeling tools apply specifically to the 3D areas of the software and at the bottom here we have the layer control for objects on the 2D view and the background fading option for grayscale, bit, uh, gray, grayscale previews and we'll cover that in more detail in those relevant sections. In the bottom left here it gives us the width, height and depth of the current part that we're working on. The main area of the software where we see what's happening is split into a 2D and a 3D view. At the moment my 2D view is maximised to fill the screen. If I select on the tab at the top here that says 3D view, then the 3D view will be maximised to fill the screen. If I click back where it's got the name of the file, I go back to the 2D view and we can see in here that there are these rulers in order to help me see the size of the part. And I can even click on those rulers and drag down things like guidelines or go ahead and switch on things like snap grids. Again, more of that will be covered in later tutorials. You should also check the reference manual for further details on those options. Sometimes it can be very helpful to see both the 2D and the 3D view at the same time. And if I go up to the view menu, I can tile these windows either horizontally so that I get the 2D view at the top, the 3D view at the bottom, or if I tile the windows vertically, I get the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. You'll notice that there are shortcut keys page up and page down, which I can click on the keyboard to do the same operations. Now, if we hit F12 on the keyboard again, just to come back across to the toolpath tab, then we'll have a quick look at the icons here. At the top here, we have the toolpath list, and then below that, we have all the icons that relate to creating toolpaths, setting up the material and also previewing the toolpaths to see how they're going to look. Hit F11, come back to the drawing tab. The last thing that I want to show you in this video is how to get help. If we come up to the help tab here, one of the most helpful things you're going to find in the software is this option called help contents. If we click on that, what it's going to do is use your default web browser to fire up the HTML-based help file that comes with the Aspire software. This is a very useful piece of documentation. First thing I see is I've got a display of the interface here, and if I want to see a particular section of the interface and the help that relates to that, I can just click on that area, such as the align objects icons, and you can see that's taken me right to that section of the help. So this is very much context sensitive of where you click on it. 
Also, you'll see some helpful links at the top here, such as the Vectric User Forum, a link to send an email for support, and also another very useful shortcut is these keyboard shortcut link. And you can see here, if I click on that, it shows me a list of all the different shortcut keys that I can use inside of the Aspire software. So the help file is very much a useful piece of documentation to refer to as you're working through the software, as you're learning things, or if you need to refer back to something in order to check on exactly how it works. And that concludes this interface and getting help overview.